David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have for you a very unique and I feel a very special pen. Um, there are inexpensive pens, there are moderately priced pens, and then there are luxury pens. And the pen I have for you today definitely falls into that latter category. And the pen is the Classic Pens LR8. Um, what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about Classic Pens and the LR line, go over some of the parts and features of the pen, some of the things I care for and some of the things I don't care for, uh, go over some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, I recently reviewed the, the Classic Pens LB5, where I also talked about Classic Pens. But just as a recap, it was founded back in 1987 by Andy Lambro and Keith Brown, uh, and they had a goal of creating exclusive limited edition lines of pens. Uh, and they have many different lines. Uh, they started off with the, the CP line, which took flagship, flagship pens from other companies and uh, typically covered them in sterling silver. Um, there is the LB series uh, that I uh, discussed previously. The LK series is a partnership with the artist Ryan Krusek. Uh, these pens are hand painted. Here's an example of the, uh, the LK2 Dignity. Uh, and you can just see it has some real nice hand painting work on it. Uh, that's actually a limited edition of only 10. Uh, and then they also have the LR line, which is what we're gonna go over today. Um, the LR line is a partnership between Andy Lambro and the artist Paul Rossi, uh, hence the LR name, Lambro and Rossi. Uh, Paul specializes in inlay as well as overlay work. For example, here's a look at the LR7, which featured some beautiful inlay as well as sterling silver overlay. Uh, it depicts the forest scene at night. Uh, and that was the LR7, but what I have to show you today is the LR8, which Andy Lambro was kind enough to lend me for this review. It comes in this box, the typical classic pens box, and we just open that up. And inside we have a nice certificate of authenticity and it's signed by Andy as well as Paul Rossi. And you can see that this one is uh, number zero of 50. Uh, the classic pens box kind of opens up in the front. And here we have the box and the pen, the LR8 Jupiter. And this is just a, a gorgeous looking pen. Um, before I go over some of the parts and features, here are a few pictures of the pen from Classic Pens. Uh, Andy's photographer does a, a much better job than I could ever do of capturing the beauty of this pen. Uh, the deep blue body and cap really lend itself uh, uh, to a bit of subtlety in the depiction of space. Uh, in the light, the stars really do a good job uh, of reflecting the light and giving them a, a bit of a twinkling illusion. Uh, the pen is made from uh, diffusion bonded acrylic and what that is is it's very thin sheets of high quality acrylic that are, are bonded together on the molecular level to create a material that is considerably stronger than just standard acrylic and then it is cut vertically uh, and that it, it does uh, it, it just creates very thin layers with some very interesting looks to it. Um, that uh, it, this particular pen, uh, the acrylic is a little on the dark side, so it doesn't show off the material as well as some of the, uh, the LB5s do, uh, but I, I still think it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, first of all, we have the, the cap here. At the end of the cap, we have uh, some real nice chatoyants, uh, and you can just kind of see a nice cross section of each of uh, one of the uh, one of the sections. Uh, then we have this sterling clip band, uh, and it's rounded, and it's so it's not flush with the rest of the cap, uh, and it's one piece with the clip, which I, I like. I like clip bands and clips that are kind of all one piece. Uh, this pen is 100% handmade uh, and handcrafted, and the time and, and craftsmanship that goes into this pen is incredible. Um, the clip alone takes approximately eight hours to craft. Um, it, it's hand fashioned out of silver, and, and then it's actually sent off to a jeweler to, uh, to weld on the, uh, the rounded part underneath, uh, and, and it is very sturdy. Um, 
I don't feel like I'm going to break this thing. It's uh, it has a, a nice uh, uh, some nice tension to it, but it's a very very nice clip. But just an idea of that much time and effort goes into the clip. Imagine what goes into the rest of the pen as well. Um, the cap is very slightly angled, about half a degree, to a very wide cap band. And here on the cap band, it says Lambro and LR8. Uh, then it says Jupiter, sterling silver, and then the number of the pen, which this one is zero out of 50. Um, this is a, uh, like I mentioned before, a limited edition pen, and there will only be 50 of these made. Um, there is a slight angle on the step down, but uh, it, it's not sharp whatsoever. And the barrel is perfectly straight. Uh, and then we have another cap band here, and then we have the end of the pen, and then it's just flat on the end or slightly rounded on the end as well. And this is a cartridge converter pen. This is not a, uh, a piston. So let's take a look at the materials here. Um, the stars are actually inlaid silver. And the uh, it, it's hard to see here, but there are silver stars and then there's constellations which are actually in gold. On here as well uh, and so on the cap you actually have uh, Ursa Major and Minor which is basically commonly known as the the big and little dipper and then on the barrel uh, there are stars in the constellation of Orion um, again it's a little hard to see but you could see these three star these three st stars in a row and that's Orion's belt uh, then we have the planet Jupiter and then we have four uh, circles around it which represent the four largest moons of Jupiter. Uh, and that how Paul does this uh, inlay work is that he has tools that actually bore maybe about halfway down into the uh, the acrylic and then he has uh, gold and, and silver wire that actually go into there and then that's adhered to in there and cut off and then sanded down and the uh, uh, the tolerances on these things are are are, are very well done, and uh, you really can't you can't even feel these whatsoever. Uh, that it's polished down and sanded down so much that you really can't even feel where any of these inlays are. Uh, and then we have Jupiter, which is the uh, flame red diffusion bonded acrylic. Um, the the texture of the acrylic really gives Jupiter a, a planetary feel. Uh, and then it has the, the four moons next to it, which are cast acrylic as well. The cap twists off. And one of the things I really like about this pen, uh, you know, it might seem small, but stuff like this gets me excited, is this has just a single thread on here. And so the purpose of that single thread is that every time you cap the pen, the clip will line up with the planet. And that no matter what you do, it's always going to line up with the planet. So little details like that are something that I would appreciate because if all of a sudden I, uh, the next time I did it, it was around the back, that would annoy me. So I, I really appreciate the little details like that. Uh, it, when you take off the cap, it reveals this very large 10 colored 18 karat nib. Classic Pens has these nibs uh, custom made by Bach to their specifications, and, and they are very, very nice and perform very well. Um, they're fairly similar in size to that of uh, a Pelican uh, M1000, and maybe in the size comparisons, I'll, I'll show these next to each other. Um, that here on the nib, it actually says Lambro 18K uh, 750, which means 75% gold, and then M for medium. Then we have a low prof profile ebonite feed, which uh, which I actually really like. Uh, I, it reminds me of the feed, the ebonite feed that's on the uh, Omaso Jiva cocktail, and I really like that one as well. Uh, we have a very nice thick section, uh, and it's flared at the end, and then there's a long section here, which I find to be very comfortable. Um, the threads are, are not sharp whatsoever and the section is large enough to where you can wherever you prefer to hold it I, I think that it's going to be comfortable for you um, that uh, it has a really good weight to it uh, you can post the pen 
but that adds some sub substantial length and uh, and it makes it very, very long and it really back weights the pen. So uh, the pen is large enough to where I really can't imagine that most people are, would, would want to post this at all. But this is, you know, it, it feels substantial uh, and, and it feels like a quality pen. Um, sometimes it's hard to describe that feeling of quality when you have it in your hand, but this pen has it. If you know what I'm talking about, this pen has it. Um, and that it feels substantial without being overly heavy. Uh, now, at the end of the section, we have this silver band, uh, which is actually part of the section mechanism. And then we have the converter. Uh, and while, yeah, it would be nice if this was a piston, uh, I, you know, I don't mind the converter at all because I like to change my inks on a regular basis. And so having just a little bit of smaller ink capacity is perfectly fine, uh, that, uh, that it works just fine. And that this uh, converter has a, a decent amount of uh, capacity. So, as I mentioned previously, this is a, a limited edition pen. There's only going to be 50 of these made. And the, these pens are actually made to order and will have a lead time of about, a, a, about two months or so. And each one might be slightly unique with its own character and personality. Uh, and this is not an inexpensive pen. Um, the full retail price for the LR8 is $3,500, um, but I believe Classic Pens actually has a discount for repeat customers. And that, you know, is it worth $3,500? Would I pay that much for it? You know, I've said this about the LB5 as well, that when you get into this price point for pens, at this point in time, at that point, you're, you're buying more than a pen. Um, you're buying a piece of art. You're buying an heirloom. You're buying actually something to hand down to, uh, to other generations. You know, the LR8 is created by American craftsmen and artists and serious thought and consideration and craftsmanship goes into the creation of this pen. Uh, you know, when I, when I first received it, I, you know, I really wasn't sure if it was my style. Uh, you know, I'm really not into astronomy that much and it really didn't blow me away at start, but the more I used the pen and the more I learned about what went into constructing it and developing it, you know, I, I developed more of an appreciation for the artistry and craftsmanship, which are, are really, really amazing. And it really has grown on me. So if it's, you know, is it worth $3,500? If you're in the market for a pen of that price range, then this is something I would definitely consider because uh, th there's nothing about it that I have seen that doesn't scream 100% quality uh, and that there was attention to every single detail about this pen. Um, if you're interested, in purchasing one of these pens, uh, you can contact Andy Lambro, and he, his contact information can be sound, found on his website, which is uh, classic, well, classicpensinc.com, uh, and uh, I'll put a link in the uh, in the video notes for this. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the LR8 Jupiter. Um, here it is with a an LB5, and you can see that this are these are uh, made out of the same material. And the LB5 is slightly longer, uh, but the the barrel is a little bit thicker on the uh, the LR8. And here it is with a Mont Blanc 149, and then here it is with a Pelican M1000. Uh, now. I had mentioned previously that the uh, the nib was fairly similar to the Pelicans, and you can see here that they're very close in size. The the one on the LR8, uh, the shoulders are slightly wider, but they're fairly close in size. And in regard to some other comparisons, we have a Lamy All Star. Then we have a Lamy Studio, and then we have a Twisby Classic. So there's some other smaller blue pens to compare it to. So here we go with the writing sample for the Classic Pens. Uh, L R eight Jupiter. 
and this is a medium nib. Now, for this particular review, I, I decided to try to start using some uh, Tomoe River uh, paper uh, in that it's not lined, and so uh, who knows, I might have a problem writing in a straight line with, with paper with no lines, uh, like the Rhodia paper I usually use is. I, I know my, my handwriting is a little unique as it is, and so this might make it even a little bit more unique. Uh, so the ink we have here is the Seitz Kreuznach. Arctic Blue. This is what the color looks like. Uh, and I, you know, I think it shows up better on the page than it does uh, uh, than it does on this sample. It shows up a little light here, but a little bit darker on the page for me. Uh, that uh, it's something fairly comparable or compar comparable. Uh, compare you can compare it to uh, Anderson's uh, like Robin's Egg Blue or even the Pelican Turquoise are kind of in the same family. Um, that I belong to uh, and attend the uh, the I, mean, I live in the Raleigh Durham area of North Carolina and uh, we have a Triangle Pen Club. The Triangle is known uh, as the kind of the area between uh, Raleigh and Durham and Chapel Hill is known as the Triangle area uh, and that we had an ink swap a couple of weeks ago and someone brought this bottle. I had never heard of this German brand before but what attracted me was this very very cool bottle. It looked kind of like a cough syrup bottle but I was able to pick some of this up um, I think I picked it up on Amazon uh, and that uh, I was very glad I did because it's a very nice color and then I think it's a, a cool bottle as well. So let's go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, it's very smooth, very smooth with a decent amount of feedback uh, and that the 18 karat nib uh, is one that you can get a decent amount of flex out of. You don't want to push it too much, but you can see that here we get a decent amount of flex and it, uh, the ink does a good job of giving some decent shading as well as some pooling uh, in, uh, in the bottom. Uh, that you can see starting off with virtually no pressure and adding more that you can get a decent line out of that. Uh, and that this is a fairly wet ink and a fairly wet nib. You can see that that is fairly wet. And in regard to reverse writing, Um, you, it can be done. It's a little bit on the scratchy side, but it does lay down a, a nice fine line. And then in regard to fast writing, there's really no issue at all. There was a little issue here, but I think that was the angle in which I was holding the pen. Um, but nothing to do with the ink flow at all. The, the feed uh, does a very good job of keeping up. So we have the Classic Pens LR8 um, Jupiter. It, it is truly a, a masterful creation. Um, the, the respect and appreciation for the pen uh, it, I have for it, it is growing every time I use it and I'm going to regret when I need to uh, hand this pen back over to Andy. So um, I really want to thank Andy for the loan of the pen and I appreciate everyone watching and I'll talk to you later. Uh, these boxes are kind of neat because they flip open and inside we have the box and no pen. Because it's over here.